Hello, my name is Terry Collins, and I'll be your lecturer for part of this course. I'm the Teresa Hines Professor of Green Chemistry at Carnegie Mellon University in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. The course is entitled Introduction to Green Chemistry. In this opening short course, we will introduce green chemistry and explore its relationship with sustainability. We'll explore hazards to health and the environment that define green chemistry's big challenges, and then we'll proceed in a very unusual way for a chemistry class. We will present sustainability ethics and its ability to unify thinking across disciplines with sustainability as the goal. In this first module, we have these objectives. First, we will consider a long-standing definition of sustainable development. Then we will consider the key drivers of sustainable development. And we will identify the grand challenges for sustainable technologies where chemists have so much to offer. What are the primary goals of green chemistry? Green chemists are working to help build the technical dimension of a sustainable civilization. We work to identify, understand and replace the unsustainable products and processes with those we believe based on current science, a sustainable alternatives. And we're working to develop a field of chemistry that can replace polluting technologies one product or process at a time, as well as to develop entirely new technologies that by the standards of current science appear to be sustainable. Now when we fail to develop sustainable societies, we run into serious trouble. We can see this very clearly by stepping back in time and looking at some interesting places around the world where there have been sustainability breakdowns. You'll learn from this that sustainability thinking in real time is critical to the welfare of a civilization. And so we'll start by using this wonderful program Google Earth to take you to the city of Ephesus in western Turkey. Ephesus was founded in 10 BC and was abandoned somewhere in the Middle Ages. It had a very illustrious history during its more than 1,000 years of existence. However, local agrarian practices led to silting up of the Kastros River, and Ephesus was slightly inland from the sea, and it was a port city. When the city lost its port, it lost the underpinnings of its economy. It was eventually abandoned and is there now for tourists to marvel at because it's in incredibly good condition. But when the Ephesians were building Ephesus, it was obvious they would not have had this fate in mind for their city. So what qualifies as sustainable development? There's been a lot of discussion about that, and you can read many wonderful books and find a great deal of information about it on the web. One now famous definition goes back more than 20 years. According to this definition, sustainable development is... Development that meets the needs of the present without compromising the ability of future generations to meet their own needs. This definition was produced by the Brundtland Commission and published in their report, Our Common Future, in 1987. It's the second part of that definition, without compromising the ability of future generations to meet their own needs, that is so critical to much of the content of this course and to sustainability in general. This is the idea of transgenerational justice. What do we have to do to identify, understand, and replace unsustainable products and processes? Let me acknowledge a key difficulty right up front. It can be difficult, very difficult, to redirect technology towards sustainability. This is partly because some of the biggest barriers aren't really technical in nature. They have to do with money, power, and human behavior. That's why the development of sustainability ethics is so vital. Not only this new topic should come into chemistry classes, but also it should be present throughout our university curriculum. As the great writer and thinker and Pittsburgh native Rachel Carson said, the human race is challenged more than ever to demonstrate mastery, not over nature, but of ourselves. 
So that's why this course opens with material that is not purely technical in nature. We have to face not simply the technical challenges that hazardous chemicals and processes present, but also develop a new kind of ethical awareness, sustainability ethics, that will help us be smarter about how we tackle the challenges that lie ahead. Because unless we deal with the real barriers to developing sustainability and green chemistry, we will never create a truly authentic field of green chemistry. We'll look a lot more deeply into sustainability ethics in later lessons, but for now, let's consider green chemistry's grand technology challenges. If we're ever going to have a sustainable civilization in its technological dimension, we will have solved three great problems. We will have sustainable energy. There are many points of view on what is or is not sustainable energy. I can only express mine. We have wonderful opportunities in solar thermal, solar photovoltaic, biofuels, waste to energy, chemical catalysis for solar to chemical energy conversions, wind, and geothermal. Chemists can make contributions to many, if not all, of these areas, and in particular, solar photovoltaic conversions and chemical catalysis for solar to chemical energy conversions are very much in the province of the chemist. The second grand challenge area is renewable feedstocks. Feedstocks for the chemical industry come, in the first instance, from oil, coal and natural gas. The idea is that we're going to be getting more of these feedstocks over time from recently dead rather than fossilised plant matter. There are many impressive accomplishments in this area in just the last decade, and we will no, no doubt see it grow rapidly. The third area concerns hazardous substances, and this really will be the major focus of our course, and of later courses that we add. In the bottom left-hand corner there, you see the molecule dioxin, or 2378 tetrachlorodibenzoparadioxin regarded by many people as perhaps the most toxic substance that we know of. There are three simple rules, in my opinion, or three key things we must do in dealing with hazardous substances. We need to move the elemental composition of technology closer to biochemistry. When you produce a technology based on a toxic substance like lead, cadmium or mercury, especially if the technology is to be distributive, spread around through our con economy, then eventually these elements will be released to the environment and they will be on the move and encounter living things. And if the living things have susceptibility, there will be toxicity. It's much better if our technologies are made of the same elements that we're comprised of or that other living things are comprised of. That's a big area of work for green chemistry. We need to eliminate persistent environmentally mobile chemicals. Many of our most serious problems, the ozone hole, many of the manifestations of endocrine disruption we'll talk so much about in, the, in this course and in later courses, have to do with persistent environmentally mobile chemicals. Now, in some cases, the value of a persistent environmentally mobile chemical can be so high that people don't want to do without it. That's true of certain drugs, for example. When that's the case, green chemistry can help by getting better technologies for managing the persistent compound after it has been used. Finally, we really have to reduce and eliminate developmental disruptors. It's so important to understand that with many technology-related sustainability challenges, we may already have promising solutions that are not getting enacted. Why? And how can we do better? For starters, we can become more ethically aware. We can weigh the short-term benefits of current practices against the long-term damage many of them are doing, and try to understand how to cost account this damage to health and the environment into our existing economic structures. If we don't, future generations will pay the price. The scientific evidence indicates 
that they already are going to be paying a heavy price.